Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to create linked reports in reporting services. What we'll cover in this session is first of all how to create links between reports using basic tables. We'll tell you how to design the two reports that you'll need, how to create parameters in a report which can accept values that are passed in, how to apply filters to a report and finally how to add actions so that clicking on an item in one report will then take you to another. When we've covered the basics, we'll then go into how to create links using other items in a report. We'll show you how to add actions to a chart, how you can create a clickable map of the world, and then finally, how you can pass multiple values to parameters using uh, links in a matrix. So let's get started. The idea of linked reports is fairly straightforward. What I'd like to be able to do is click on the name of a country in this list and for that to then automatically take me to another report which will show me all the films made in that country. So to get started with this example we've built two very simple reports. One of which simply shows us the list of countries we'd like to be able to select. If I can show you in the design view the report data window what's actually in the data set. We've got one field which is the country name and that's what we're going to display but we've also got a country ID field and this is the value that will be passed into the second report to apply the filter. So I can show you the same information for the second report back in the report data window from design view first report data window the data set contains again the fields that we'd like to display to the user so that's the film name the release date and the running time in minutes and then we also have the film's country ID which will be used to filter this list. So once you've set up the two basic reports, the next step is to create a parameter in the second report which will accept a value passed in via the first. So I'm in the second report here, the one that shows me the list of films made in the country that I've selected. And in the report data window, I'm going to add a new parameter by right clicking on the folder and choosing to add parameter. Now we've produced a much longer video which explains all the, uh, the details of how parameters work. So I'm just going to take you through the absolute basics here. First of all I'm going to give the parameter a sensible name. I'm going to call it PRM Country ID. I don't need a prompt because this will be a hidden parameter. The user will never see a prompt even if we type one in. I do need to set the data type properly. The Country ID field, the one that I'm going to use to filter the report, uh, contains an integer or a whole number. I'm going to make sure that I've selected integer. And finally, to make sure that the user doesn't see the parameter, I'm going to make it a hidden one. And at that point I can click OK and my parameter has been created. Once you've finished creating the parameter, the next step is to then use the value to filter the results in the report. So I'm going to do that by applying a filter to the dataset itself. I can do that by right clicking and choosing dataset properties and on the filters tab of the dialog box I can choose to add a filter. I'd like to show films where the film's country ID is equal to the value of the parameter that I'm passing in. The simplest way I think to do that is to use the expression builder. If I click the FX button that will give me a quick way to select from my list of parameters in the report. So I select the parameters category down here and then simply double click on the name of the parameter that I'm interested in. If I click OK and click OK again, that's then all that we need to do to the second report. We've created the parameter and used that value to filter the results. So at this point I can save it, close it down and go back to the main report. All that I have to do now is add an action to the text box in this report that I'd like to be able to click on. I should have made a quick note about what the name of the, uh, the second report was. If I can just quickly show you in the, uh, the Solution Explorer here, the name of the report that I'm linking to is called number 34, Films by Country. Um, that's quite an important piece of information, otherwise I'd, uh, I wouldn't know which, which report I was linking to. So if I right click on the, the country name text box, I can choose to view its properties. And on the dialog box that appears, there's a, there's a page called Action, which if I select, there are four things I can do. Now hopefully, obviously, I'm going to choose the one that says uh, Go to Report. And this is why it was so important to remember the name of my report, because I need to be able to select it from this list here. So it's number 34, Films by Country. 
Now, in, in general, that's all you really need to do to set up a, a hyperlink between reports. You can use this to create sort of basic menu systems in your projects. But we'd like ours to go a step further. We want to pass in a piece of information to our second report. So we can do that by using the parameters section down here. I'm going to add a piece of information. And first of all, I need to select the parameter in the second report that I'm passing my information into. So that's the other uh, one that I created earlier on. PRM country ID. Then I need to choose the value from this report that I'm passing into that parameter. And again, hopefully that's fairly obvious. I'm going to pass in the country ID from this report into that parameter in the second. All I need to do then is click OK, preview my report, and hopefully just click on the name of a country. Let's go for Japan. And there we go. The second report is now running, but filtered by the value of the Japanese country ID. To get back to the main report, there's a there's a toolbar in the, in the design view, uh, sorry, in the, in the Visual Studio view when you're building your project to take you back. In the real world, you simply click the back button in your browser. And that's how to basically set up actions and linked reports. If you're creating links between reports, it's useful to know that you're not limited to adding actions to just tables. Almost every type of object in reporting services allows you to attach an action to it. So in this example, we're, we're actually building a, a pie chart. And in the data set, we've got a list of uh, the country name and a field that we like to, to aggregate, which is the film's box office dollars. And again, the country's ID that we can use to pass to another report. The report itself is a uh, the chart itself is fairly straightforward. It's just uh, the country name in the category groups, and for the values that we're displaying is the average film box office dollars. When I preview the report, it's a fairly straightforward pie chart. Eventually, there we go. So New Zealand clearly has the biggest average box office. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an action to each slice of pie, so that by clicking on it, will take us to the, the same report we saw earlier on, filtered by the country that we've selected. To do that, we head back to the design view, and then we can select and right-click on the, uh, the data series in the chart. We're viewing the series properties, and once again, we're looking at the action page of the dialog box. And from this point on, everything is exactly the same. I want to go to a report. The report I want to go to is number 34, Films by Country. And I want to pass in a piece of information into the parameter called Country ID. And the value that I'm going to pass is the Country ID of the piece of pie that I've selected. If I click OK and then preview the report, when I hover the mouse over each piece of pie, I can see the hyperlink cursor. If I want to see why New Zealand's box office takings are quite so high, if I click on it, that will show me all the films made in that country. So we've shown you how to add an action to a table and to a chart, but for this particular example, where we're selecting from countries of the world, what better way to do it than with a clickable map? Now we haven't produced a video yet on how to work with maps and reporting services, but that one's coming soon. This is just a preview of some of the fun things you can do with them. So what we have so far is a basic map which displays a colour-coded view of the countries of the world. So um, the, the greener countries have more films released in them, and the redder countries have fewer films released in them. The white ones have no films at all. What we're going to do is set up an action so that by clicking on a particular country, it takes us to the film uh, report showing a list of films made in that country, just as we've done before. So back in the design view, I need to add an action to, uh, to what's referred to as a layer of the map, and there's a polygon layer here which refers to the individual outlines of the countries. If I right click on the polygon layer in the, uh, the map layers window, I can choose to view its properties. And once again, just as usual, there's an action page at the dialog box. And from this point on, everything else is pretty much identical. I'm going to choose to go to a report. The one that I'm going to go to is again number 34, Films by Country. And I'm going to add in a value to pass into the country ID parameter. Now, slightly differently here, it's not possible to just directly select the country ID field. So what I'm going to do is use the expression builder to choose the appropriate field. 
country ID value and when I click OK and OK again I've now created a clickable map of the world. You can see that when I hover the mouse over the various different uh, countries I get the hyperlink symbol and if for example I click on France I should get a list of films made in France. If I click the back button to go back I can try let's say China for example and again the, the idea is actually very very simple in principle but it's nice to see some of the fun things you can do with it. You can also create actions which pass values to more than one parameter in the second report. So in this example we've created a basic data set which includes the film's uh, running time in minutes but then also the country and certificate information about the film. For each of the country and certificate we've included the ID fields because again we're going to pass those values into the second report. We've added all that data to a simple matrix, which if I preview the report, you should get a better idea of what it looks like. We've got a, a list of countries down the left-hand side, and a list of film certificates across the top. And then in the data region, we have the average running time in minutes for that combination of country and certificate. And just as previously, what I'd like to be able to do is click on one of these data items and for that to take me to a report which is filtered by both the country and the certificate. So we've already created the basic report that we're going to link to and again it shows simply the film's name, release date and running time in minutes. In the report data window we can see that the data set also includes the country ID and the certificate ID for each film. So the next step, as previously, is to create the parameters which will accept the values passed in from the first report. So let's right click the parameters folder and choose to add a parameter. I'll call the first one PRM country ID. And this will be exactly as we did earlier on. We don't need a prompt because we'll never see the parameter. It will be an integer data type and it's going to be a hidden parameter. I can then simply create another one in exactly the same way. This one I'll call PRM Certificate ID and no prompt I'll change the data type to integer and make this one hidden as well. All I need to do now is apply those two parameters or use those two parameter values at least in filters on the data set. So I can right click on the data set and choose to view its properties and on the filters tab I can choose to add one filter which will filter by country ID and for the value, I'll click the FX button to launch the Expression Builder. Look for the Parameters category in the bottom left hand corner and double click on the Country ID parameter. I can add another filter and this one will use the Film Certificate ID field and I'm looking to match that against whatever value has been passed in through the Certificate ID parameter. If I click OK and click OK again I can now save this report and close that one down. Back to the main report then and back to the design view. I need to add an action to the film runtime minutes text box. So I can do that by right clicking and choosing to view its properties and on the action tab choosing to go to a report and I choose the report I want to link to and that in this case is number 37 films by country and certificate and then all I need to do is add the values that I'm going to pass to the parameters in that report. So I'll go for the country ID parameter first and I'll pass in the country ID and then I'll go for the certificate ID parameter second and pass in the certificate ID. All I need to do now is click OK, preview the report and finally I should be able to click on a single data point in here. Let's go for the United Kingdom with a 12A certificate and that should show me the films made in that country with that certificate. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.